Hello, hello, everyone. Hopefully you're hearing this on the stream. We're about to get started. Please tell everybody to tune in. All right, let's get going here. Thanks, everybody. It looks like we have a very full house. Uh, welcome to the very first of what we hope will be several community roundtables uh, with leadership at Linden Lab. Thank you for joining us. So just a few basics before we get started, just to sort of set expectations. This is new for all of us. So we ask for your patience. We'll learn from what works and doesn't work during this session, and that will help adjust format for future roundtables. Uh, if you haven't already, please uh, enable your music stream uh, or tell others. It, we'll be putting that in chat as well. Uh, we'll be monitoring text chat because there's a lot of questions that you submitted both ahead of time and we know during the session as well. We'll do our best to respond. We may not do so in real time, but we are paying attention and taking note of the questions. Um, we're going to start with a series of key topics and themes that came up the most in our pre-submitted questions from the community. And we'll try to include some of those questions and also integrate things we're seeing in text chat during today's session. We do have about an hour and a half. This is a roundtable format, so we are here to not just respond and talk, but also to take in in real time your feedback and ideas to improve Second Life. And we do recognize, of course, that this format does have limitations. So we may not have time to answer every single question, but we will try to address as much as we can from the topics that have come up repeatedly in both the chat and in the pre-submitted questions. A few reminders as well, and we'll put these links in chat shortly. Individual account issues, so specific one-offs that are for you and maybe not the general community, please direct those to the support portal. You'll probably get more efficient responses there than in this format. Also, a reminder to everybody that we do have our feedback portal, and that is looked at by executives and employees, and that's a great way to reach us at any time with specific ideas, concerns, bugs, whatever it might be. And then finally, uh, there may be times that there are questions that we honestly cannot answer. They may be more appropriate for a different Linden uh, executive or employee that is not here in this session, but we do encourage you to attend one of the many recurring user group meetups that are in World. We'll be posting a link to the wiki with the schedule where those meetups are available. We do those every month and sometimes weekly or biweekly. So there's several of those that you can check out as well. So with that said, let's get started. Uh, with me today, of course, is the executive chairman and owner of Linden Lab, Oberwolf Linden. Welcome. Thank you. And of course, the senior VP of product and engineering, Grumpity Linden. Welcome, Grumpity. Great to be here. So let's get started with a handful of topics that we saw come up repeatedly in the submitted questions. First off, there's been a lot of chatter in the community about what changes we might be making to improve Second Life, not just technically, but also operationally. I know that Grumpy is gonna address the technical stuff as we answer some of the questions that'll come up, but uh, let's to put this first one to Oberwolf. Can you share a little bit about what is happening from your perspective uh, to make Second Life better as an owner of Linden Lab? Sure, um, and thanks for the opportunity to answer that question. I think the best way to answer it is to give some background or some context on how I think about um, Second Life and Linden, because I have to think about both, right? So um, to me, they are two different things. So I've owned Linden for almost three and a half years, um, and I've learned a couple of things along the way. So and this is in no particular order, but one of the things I've learned is how passionate everyone is. And when I say everyone, I mean the residents, the creators, um, the Lindens, and then there's this, you know, and, and outsiders. Um, there's a lot of people that are passionate about Second Life who actually aren't even in Second Life. Um, there's writers, there's... Uh, there's haters, there's there's all sorts of things, but the passion is really overwhelming. So that's one thing. The other thing I've learned is the importance of Second Life. Um, I've said it before, and I'll probably say it, you know, now and again today, which is that I really believe that there's a moral imperative uh, that Second Life continues on. And what I mean by that is it's so important to 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 people. 
and and again the same the the creators people who make livelihoods the the residents who who are able to um really experience their their best lives in in world um and the lindens the importance of second life is is really quite staggering um and the other thing i've learned is how complicated uh it is and i don't mean complicated just from a technical aspect although that is an extremely um that that is one of the things i've learned there are not many things that were built uh, 20 years ago with um a vision and a dream um and then the most uh, complicated financial system for any virtual world or or even if you look over at games um uh and i can talk about before we hand it to grumpy about the complexity that i see but also the complexity of dealing um of, of making second life the best thing for the residents and the creators you know not everyone um wants the same thing it's it's a little like trying to be in charge of of los angeles right there's there's just lots of um stakeholders who want what they want and um satisfying everyone has has is is complicated um as we as we're going to talk to and and policies and things they they impact different people in different ways but if you look at you know analog things like a roblox or a sims like we're way more complicated than those we have this linden dollar which is what makes us so good for creators um we take so much less of um of the money that goes through the system as it goes to creators compared to some of those other companies that's because of the linden dollar that's unbelievably complicated um we are for we are a virtual world for grown-ups um that means that there are things in our world that other other folks are do not allow we want to allow as much as possible that makes things very complicated because you've got people with varying levels of what that is we've got to make it safe um that's very complicated and so when you when you have these complicated things going on and this will get a little closer to your um to your question um you have to rely on values you have to sit back and you have to say we're not going to solve every problem in fact that would be terrible um it, you know uh utopia is not the goal here utopia is boring the way you get to utopia is that's because everyone wants the same thing you answer their thing everybody wants to be dressed in white clothes because they think that makes everything better so everyone has to dress in white clothes and boom you have utopia we don't want that we want complicated but then you have to start to think okay how is lindens and how as how do we as lindens and how do we as residents and how do we as creators how are we going to work together to make second life the best it can be at linden what we've chosen to do is rely and be guided by a thing called the dow of linden and if you haven't looked at it you should it's on our website and it's and it's real we we really do live that way and and I'll briefly talk about them one is um we walk in our resident shoes and you know what that means is is that every time we look at something and i mean every time not just oh resident said this or a creator asked for this or but even in technical problems even in deciding what to work on next we have limited resources we can only work on certain things we try to say okay if i was a resident what would we want to do um that that forces us to be very very thoughtful with the resident in mind the other thing is we do try very hard to be brave what that means that means different things in different areas but what we try to do is launch things we try we try things and we try it's not like mark zuckerberg you know break things or whatever that's not what we're trying to do but we do fail at stuff and we just want to fail forward the harder ones um when it comes to us and resonance is we really want to assume good intent um we get a lot of comments about what we do um and so you know not not all of them are super positive 
Um, we get a lot of people saying that we're doing this wrong and we're doing that wrong. We've had a tough couple months. But what we try to do is we try to assume good intent. We always try to find what's good about the comment, even if the comment is mean. We will always say, well, what does that mean? That means we have something that we have to react to. We have something to change. And then we really work together. And I mean that <clears throat> not just on the Linden side, but we try to work with the residents. We try to work with our creators as much as possible. I've gone to um, summits where some of the creators have come in. Um, I've engaged every once in a while because um, it would be it would be overwhelming. But every once in a while, I'll engage with a with a resident or a creator and and really try to learn. Um, and I and I've learned a lot. And what comes out of that when you rely on these. When you rely on these values, particularly ours, which are very community, they're very encompassing, they're very um, they're very positive. They're not like another company that says, this is how we act. Um, you know, we're more than just in service of Second Life and the residents. We're really part of it, right? Most Lindens are Lindens because they've spent time in Second Life. Um, and and so when you do that and you get these comments, what you have to and you rely on these these values, what you end up with is, is you end up with some guiding things beyond the doubt, which which we're trying to change. And so when you ask like what changes are coming, I kind of put them in different buckets. So but before I do that um, and before we talk about some of the change and we've got tunes and we've got we've got some of the things we've done in our in our terms and things like that. Everybody wants us to get better. The residents, the creators, Lindens, we all want to get better. The question is, there's two things about that. One is, what do we work on to get better? We go back to the Dow. We, we have to make decisions. We have limited resources. And two is, how do we tell everyone that we're doing it, right? This is, this is not easy, right? You make a change, everyone comments. Everyone wants us to get better. To get better, we have to do change. Nobody wants change. I've never gone and talked in front of a company or in front of someone and said, hey, we're going to make a whole bunch of changes. And everyone says, awesome. It's not the way it works. It's not the way residents say. Nobody likes change. But if you don't change, you become irrelevant. And everyone likes irrelevance less than change. So what I need or what we need is we need to go back to this stuff, assume good intent, assume, know that we're walking in the resident's shoes. And when you see things change, know that it's because we're trying to get better, right? So, so when asked, you know, what changes, am I, you know, what are the changes that I'm thinking about? They're not secrets, right? We're trying to be very transparent. One of the main changes that we're trying to do um, is uh, is transparency. We're just trying to get better at letting everyone know what we're doing, what why we're doing it. It's a real goal of ours, and it's really hard because, again, it's so complicated that no matter what we say at any time, there's going to be a group of people that are passionately excited. There's going to be a group of people that don't really care about this particular one. And there's going to be a group of people that get very nervous and that anxiety turns can turn into anger or can turn into all these different things. And that's, and that's that group of people. And we're tr constantly trying to balance that. So when you ask me what I, what I'm going to talk about later, if the questions come up is I'm very focused on um, the way I can make the world better and satisfy this moral imperative from my role is resources. It's where do I put the time and the money and the energy that I have? Where do I put that? How do we make the world better? And that's that's primarily what I think about um, for most of my day when I, you know, which is, and my most of my day is thinking about Linden and Second Life. When I'm thinking about that, I'm constantly thinking about um, how do I make it safer? How do we become more transparent? How do we do the things that make the residents happier? And where do I put the resources to have the biggest impact 
on the world going forward. Um, so, so, you know, with that, Brad, turn it back to you. Um, that's the context for all of my answers today. And I'm really appreciative that when we talked about doing this for the first time, that you asked me to be on it. Um, that's quite an honor. And, um, you know, I understand that people will parse my words. Um, that's part of the, that's part of the game. That's part of the complicate, not part of the game. Lin Second life's not a game. That's part of the game of having me on uh, a program like this. I get that. And so I'm just going to be as transparent as possible. Um, and uh, I'll turn it back to you. That's, that's the context. Thank you. Rupati, before we get into the detailed questions for the community, just do you want to follow up just on the general idea of making Second Life better? We've heard a little bit of high vision from, from uh, Oberwolf. From your perspective as a senior VP of product and engineering, what are your thoughts? Wow, um, tough act to follow. <laughs> um, I think, uh, you know, as we think about change and as we talk about change, uh, there's a lot that we're trying to do to keep Second Life moving forward and to innovate. Um, so what you're going to see, and hopefully those of you following along with our user groups, for example, have already seen, is we're picking up the pace of innovation. We're making changes that move Second Life forward, that really change the, the kind of the landscape, although sometimes literally, um, of creation and Second Life, as well as just being in SL and socializing. Uh, certainly a little bit later, I would love to talk about our efforts on mobile, which I am excited and nervous and, um, you know, anticipatory, <laughs> I guess is the biggest word here, uh, about, and I know uh, many of you are as well. Um, I also, I think, want to talk a little bit about the recent policy updates uh, that our team has so thoughtfully put together. Um, a lot of the questions that came in had to do with the policy, um, and I think we'll, we'll answer some more specific ones uh, a little bit later on as well. Um, but what I want to say is, uh, before we ever published changes to the child avatar policy, we went through every bit of change that was put in and we talked to Lindens internally and we got feedback and we talked to Lindens who have accounts that would be affected, right? There are Lindens who have child avatar alts um, who have thought about these changes very carefully and we um, talked to the community uh, and the changes that we would put in are to safeguard our community and to protect residents and to protect Linden Lab. Um, and so we, um, I think, uh, took a lot of thought and care um, and uh, really positive intent. Um, a lot of questions that came in were actually addressed in a governance user group. Uh, it was recorded, um, and uh, there's also, as usual, an excellent summary from NRPA. Um, we will continue to give clarity as community questions come up, uh, and the best place to see the updated guidance is the FAQ that was published. It will continue to get updated. Um, we also uh, specifically brought up the governance user group, um, brought back, and uh, you can see all of the user groups. Um, we love to have people come and participate. Um, so, uh, they're here and, they're, and you get to see a rotating crew of Lindens coming into those, uh, and they're always very lively. Um, I just, going back to, to these changes, I want to say that we really do welcome the breadth and variety of expression in Second Life and we welcome and respect those who role play as children in SL. Um, and there's all sorts of wonderful, positive reasons for this community, right? 
Um, but we also absolutely have to protect our community um, and uh, the company itself uh, from uh, sexualized adult content um, in any way intermixing with the child avatars. Um, and it, you know, there's there's plenty of of reasons for this um, that uh, are both ethical and moral, as well as the ongoing risks to our operation that this could introduce. Um, many people have asked for more clarity on the required modesty layers, as well as how we will police and enforce these. So the modesty layer requirement uh, will take effect and begin to be enforced on June 30th. The FAQ is being updated regularly um, and uh, this is the FAQ. Um, it is being um, uh, updated with questions which are submitted. Uh, so as you can see, there's the modesty layer guidance on there. There's also going to be another governance user group on June 13th. It will be in this same location. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm sure it will also be lively. <laughs> um, we have been very thoughtful and careful in, in these uh, in these policy changes, and uh, I guess we ask of you um, the same thing we ask of ourselves. Assume good intent, um, because we are here because we love Second Life and we want to protect Second Life. There's a lot of questions and comments coming in. This also uh, mirrors what we saw in the pre-submitted questions. So this is clearly a very hot topic. Um, just to acknowledge to everybody that we are reading the feedback that comes in. We'll do our best to address it. There are some follow-up questions we'll get to as this hour continues. Um, one I just want to grab randomly from here is, does the TOS change have to do with mobile in any way? So <clears throat> let me let me jump in um, in terms of uh, thought in, in terms of that. So to, to, I want to give an example of why we have to do this outside of Second Life. So when we talk about safety, when we talk about the interactions in Second Life, people may not like it. People may have questions about their avatar, things that Grumpity and, and other folks in the org can talk about. But let me give you a Linden way uh, or Linden reason. How many people on this who are listening here enjoy using their credit card and or PayPal? Right. So just think about that for a second. Do you like being able to buy Linden dollars? Do you enjoy being able to move Linden dollars in the world? Do you like being able to convert those Linden dollars into US dollars, putting them in their bank? Because if you do, put yourselves in those people's shoes for a second. So let's say something is written or posted publicly about things that we're talking about right now and your PayPal, and you read that, right? You are unable to differentiate and to say to yourself, oh, there are two adults there and they are role-playing. You're not able to do that. You're only able to say, this sounds like something I don't wanna be involved in. So when you think about how, why, what we're trying to do, Please think that there are, please understand that assuming good intent and making these changes, it's not necessarily about you. It's about the safety for Second Life. It's about making Second Life better, but it's also external. There are things that Lyndon has to worry about when you talk about these things. That's where terms, terms and conditions are not written by me. Terms and conditions are offered up by Lindens. We talk to other people and then eventually lawyers look at them too, right? So understand there's a lot going on here. When you think about mobile, so in particular to Brett's question, when you think about mobile, we have our terms and conditions. Guess who else has terms and conditions? Apple, Google, 
they have terms and conditions. So you can have you can have the loosest terms and conditions you want, but if everyone wants a mobile app, you have to follow a lot of rules that are put out there um, that are strict. And so you've got to come up with ways to produce the best outcome within rules that society has, right? And, you know, that's a, that's a tough thing because society in general does not necessarily understand Second Life. They don't necessarily understand. All they can do is read things, go in world if they want. Most people make decisions without ever going in world, without ever really thinking through it. They just default to, to, to ideas and preconceived notions. And so that's, that's what I mean when I say complicated. Like that's hard stuff, right? There, th this is all um, above board, grown up, you know, adults. Um, but the rest of the world looks at it how they're going to look at it. That's the complication. So, does this have to do with mobile? Absolutely. Everything we're doing right now, we have to think of mobile. Does it have to do with Apple's rules and regulations? Absolutely. Does it have to do with PayPal's regulations? Absolutely. So it's beyond just what are we trying to do to people in Second Life? We've got lots of things that we have to worry about. So, and think through to make this last. And then I go back to this moral imperative. We must always put Second Life first and make it so that the future of Second Life is assured. That is the primary you know, mission of the company is keep this going as open and as safe and as fun and as important as it is. Keep that going for years and years to come. Great. Lots of feedback coming in as you're talking. Uh, just no. well, <laughs> well, you can read it. It's scrolling very quickly. Um, so Coffee Pancake, see your comment. If you boot the adults to satisfy PayPal, there will be no one here to use PayPal. That's kind of an indication of some of the sentiment that we're getting. Any comments on that? As yeah. Those? yeah, this is what I mean by everything I say will get parsed out. At what point did I say we're going to boot the adults? Not one time. What I said was, think through when we're writing terms and conditions that we have lots of different stakeholders that are part of it. So the, the, the whole point of what I said was, I believe that there are adults and I believe adults should be able to do what adults want to do. We did not build Roblox. We built Second Life to be open for adults and grownups. Never did I think or does anyone in this organization think that we are booting people? What we're trying to do is make it safe and to have different things happen in different parts of the world and to do it in the right way. I want it all to continue. We just have to do it the right way. We have to make it continue on. Thanks, Brad. In a minute, we're going to ask a question to you about the Tunes uh, deal. Uh, but just one Great. thing to wrap this topic up. Um, there's a lot of questions coming in specific to modesty layers, getting really in the weeds about it, and they're very real concerns. I want to acknowledge to everybody that we do see those questions. There is the, as people as mentioned by Grumpity, the governance user group, and that meets regularly. We encourage people to uh, engage directly with that team uh, who will be there to listen and provide answers and feedback and hear your concerns there. So please uh, direct a lot of that. You'll get more of a nuanced answer in the governance user group for that. Let's shift gears here to the uh, Tunes uh, deal. It's been almost to the day, maybe a couple days shy here, of the April 23rd announcement uh, almost a month ago that glo uh, global cross-border payments company Tunes signed an agreement to acquire Second Life's payment platform, Tilia. This spawned a lot of questions from the community, many of which are focusing on how this will change payment processing in Second Life. For example, we had a resident uh, submit a question specifically asking if there was going to be new fees due to this deal. 
Uh, we had another resident worried that tunes will drop support and service to Second Life. Now, um, you already addressed many of these questions in detail in a recent lab gap, so we'll certainly direct people to that. But perhaps you can reiterate for this group at a high level why the community should not be worried about this deal. Okay. So, so you did mention something that I was going to say. So, please, do that you know, I spent a long time on the lab gap, lab gab, um, very detailed, going through why I did it this way, what this means, and so if whatever I say right now doesn't satisfy you, go listen to that because that's really where the question is answered. But so, so Tunes is a massive. Uh, as Brett said, cross-border um, money mover. And when you do that, you it, around the world, you need um, licenses to do that, particularly in the United States. And what's interesting about this major company that's moving billions of dollars and doing things way better than Tilia even had on their roadmap, because what they've done is they've spent a lot of money to be able to do that, um, what was so interesting is they didn't have the licenses in the United States, and we did. Tilia is an unbelievable, you want to talk complicated. Tilia is an unbelievably complicated company to run. The reason why we're able to do what we do with residents and creators in ways that are different than Roblox, and I'll use them as the example because they're such a good analog for how to do it differently and uh, in my opinion, much worse than what we do in Second Life. To do what we do in Second Life, we became an incredibly regulated entity. And that was so complicated that we built all of our regulations and all of our systems in a company called Tilia. Tilia is very expensive to run if you don't have scale. And Second Life, while how great it is and how large it is and how much activity. That's not what I mean by scale. Scale to run a fintech like um, Tilia has to be, you have to add a zero to um, everything that Second Life's doing in order to pay for Tilia. So we found a company as we were thinking like, wow, this is, you know, this is not an easy thing to do. We found a company that already has that scale and is going to immediately make Tilia at scale. They're going to then invest in Tilia. In fact, Tilia is becoming their sort of U.S. operation. It's not that they're, it's, I talked about this in live data. It's very, very complicated, the type of merger that we're doing. But Tilia is actually the entity that, that, that lasts. It's just we're changing ownership from Linden to Tunes. So in many ways, Tilia isn't changing except for in the important ways, which is Tilly is going to get many, many, many more payout um, systems and methods. It's going to get different pay-in systems. It's not going to lose anything. Nothing that Tilly is doing is going to get taken away. All it is is additive. And it's additive from a company that, trust me, it's the, it was the best company to take this on. So my goal in doing this was to make it to make Tilia better, um, to make it better for the residents, uh, to very much make make it better for the uh, creators. Um, when you talk about fees, nothing. I, I will never on any call ever say about anything. Nothing will change forever in the future. That would be really really not smart for me to say so that let's let's let those comments roll in that i just didn't say but what i will say is tilia has never been in charge of the fees that we charge ever second life charges the fees and pays tilia which will soon be tunes pays that company to do what we need them to do so Tunes could double the fees. That would be really problematic for us, but I don't have to change the fees at Second Life. We've always, so there's no difference from me whether I own 80% of Tilia, I own 20% of Tilia, I own 0% of Tilia. There's no difference to Linden who owns Tilia 
in terms of the fees that we charge creators. And any creator knows that if you create on our platform or you create on Roblox, you make a hell of a lot more money creating on our platform for the same dollar that comes in. And so that fee that we charge, which then pays for things like mobile and databases um, and trying to reduce lag times, that fee is set by us, not by Tunes. So we have total control over that. So any fear around that, while justified on the one hand, anything that happens, nobody likes change, any fear should be mitigated by the knowledge that those fees, credit cards charges fees, we, we can't change those fees, but no one gets worried if, if we use XYZ uh, com credit card company and they got bought, nobody would panic and say, oh my God, what's gonna happen? Are we gonna still accept credit cards? Same thing, just because Tilly is bought, nothing's changing um, and we decide, um, uh, what, uh, what the fees are. Thank you. There's a couple of, uh, comments we'll just read out. They, I think you've addressed a lot of this, but, uh, so somebody is asking, so you're saying that the fees won't change. I guess they're looking for some yeah. sort of clarity. Research. Again. So, um, you know, I, hard for me to believe only one person asked that question, but what did I say? I said, I will never under any circumstances ever say for the rest of my life, I will never change something that is never going to come out of my mouth. And I don't care what the question is. The question is, are you going to change your name? I'm not going to ever say I will never change. And I mean, my name in the real world, never going to say I will never make a change. Change is part of life. And by the way, who says that if I make a change, I didn't, I'm not going to make it lower, right? which by the way, I'm not gonna do. I have no plans on making the fees lower and I have no plans on making the fees higher. But the question is, will I say the fees never change? How can I answer that question? The world changes all the time. That said, at least you know that Tunes is not in charge of the change, right? We charge the fees, so. I'm I'm just shocked that only one person asked that question. I want to know at the end how many how many did. But nobody nobody said how much lower are you going to make the fees because that's not what you're worried about. You're worried about the fees going up. And you know we've stood by this fee for a long time. And I just want to make sure that everyone knows, like it's a very low percentage of what every other company out there charges. Like we are really good to our creators, really, really good. And if I suddenly give you even more options to take your money out of our system, because if you take your money out through another company and then that company charges you fees, wouldn't it be better for Tilia to have different ways? We still charge our same fee, but then you don't get a second fee charged and you get it to put it in your local currency or your local bank. That's the kind of stuff that Tunes brings. So this deal was much better for residents than it was for Linden in the sense that we could have sold it to other companies. We had offers to buy it for more money, but we chose this because this was the number one thing for residents. And you can believe me or not on that one, but that is the truth. I definitely turned down more money in order to sell this company to the one company that I found that I thought would be best for the residents and the creators, that is the truth. There's a few questions uh, asking about PayPal. Can you just clarify as things stand, is PayPal gonna continue or be supported because it's still, is there any changes hey, there? PayPal is continue to be supported. We have no expectations to change it. We have no expectations um, to change how they support us. We do have to, we do want to constantly be making the world safe um, and making sure that our terms and conditions match up with what they demand. But um, it would it, it would be horrible uh, for us to change our relationship with PayPal. We want that to continue for everyone's sake. Okay, excellent. Uh, just looking through a lot of the questions I'm seeing in chat in all candidness have been addressed in your lab gab. So we probably will not retread that here, but we will encourage people to go watch that lab gab um, if they would like to go into the weeds on that. 
Um, all right, perhaps we'll shift to another topic. Um, so uh, Grumpy, this will be to you speaking about mobile. Um, so an, another area where we are getting a lot of questions, uh, certainly in the pre-submitted ones, has to do with the mobile app. A lot going on there. Maybe you can give us an update about how that's going. And I do want to specifically call out a more nuanced question that came from, I think it was Oliver Skydancer in the community. And it, this is quoting him, looking at the traffic on adult, moderate, uh, and adult regions, how do you estimate the success of a Second Life mobile app when the strict restrictions imposed by the app stores make the use of Second Life on a mobile device uninteresting, if not impossible? Robert? To an extent, I share your concern, Oliver. Um, Second Life uh, has a lot of uh, really broad uh, content, and some of it uh, I don't think will ever uh, pass the App Store restrictions and even the Play Store restrictions on Android. Um, what we're trying to do is really walk a narrow line between uh, what the requirements are for us to be able to provide the app in the app store and to make sure to reach the broadest audience um, and the content we can display. Um, because uh, most Second Life content is made by all of you, uh, we can't just say, here's all the stuff that's in, here's all the stuff that's out. So we have to use some uh, secondary ways of deciding what's in and out. Um, Currently, what we have decided uh, we have to do is disallow access to adult regions on mobile. Uh, what we're working on is to be able to have finer grain differentiation so that uh, we could potentially allow access to adult regions, but not display, for example, adult content. Obviously, this is a technically more difficult solution and so we're still working in the background for how to achieve this um, we're also looking at how to have more fine-grained solutions so that only regions where restrictions exist would actually have those restrictions put in place um, in general android has been known to be a more open platform for various forms of content uh, but that's becoming less the case more recently um, Ultimately, we want to bring all of your second life to you on mobile, um, and we'll continue exploring ways to do so. Speaking of which, um, we don't have any announcements yet, um, and I would hate to say soon TM, uh, but the reason we're having this conversation about the app stores is because we're getting closer to uh, getting the app on the app stores. Um, and our next step is to make it available to all of our premium subscribers. Um, so fingers crossed, uh, holding my breath a little bit, uh, but uh, can't wait to make some announcements um, in the next woo, few weeks, months, um, shortly, soon. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of questions about that. Hey, when can I get access to mobile? Obviously, it's at the premium plus right now, but you're not, we're not able to reveal a sneak peek on a date or anything at this point. No sneak peek on a date, uh, because, you know, I would immediately then violate that date <laughs> uh, when we discover uh, that we've run into issues, but we're typing as fast as I can, <laughs> as, uh, as everyone can, honestly. Uh, I'm obviously not doing all of the typing. And some interesting comments coming in to just sort of uh, elaborating a bit or asking for elaboration on what that means in terms of restrictions on A-rated regions. Um, I don't know if that's anything that you want to address at a deeper level or, you know, we can at least... Well, maybe can I address it? Sure. So so here's the, the wonderful thing about Second Life. Every, someone will figure out how to how to how to make this, how to mess this up, right? If you want to, right? Someone someone could absolutely be smart enough and figure out how to mess this up and get something adult through the system. And then Apple's gonna see it and then we're gonna get the app kicked off. Don't do that, right? Just let us just go slowly here. Let us spend all the money that we've spent on this mobile app. Let us get it up there. Let us 
Let us walk before we run. Let us get everyone comfortable with this before we try to draw, you know, before we try to skate against the line. Let us err on being careful. Let us let us do it that way. And don't like I'm I'm like begging, like, don't try to prove a point. Don't try to get around the system right now. Just let this go right so that we can get everyone this mobile app as fast as possible. We are letting it out slowly for a reason, okay? We need to walk before we run. We need to get this working before it doesn't. We need people, I'm not gonna say you must leave good reviews on the App Store. Yeah, I want you to review it. But if we get really good reviews, Thing, good things will happen. If we get a whole bunch of bad reviews through the app store, bad things will happen. So let's just give us the time to get this right. And I understand all the questions. What about this? What can we do this? Those questions are legit. Trying to prove that we can't do something, that would be really bad. So let's just all be smart about it and let us get this out there as fast as possible chat away. You know, we want the marketplace on there. Right now, we can't put our marketplace on a mobile app. That would be a disaster, right? We want to be able to buy Linden dollars at some point. Right now, we couldn't do that. We wouldn't even know how to get get through, you know, there's all these things that we have to figure out. Grumpity and the team, we're driving resources. We have people on it. She's doing everything she can enjoy what we're putting out there when we get it out there and give us time to run. Let us walk first, get it into these stores and just build over time the best mobile experience we can. It is not going to happen overnight. Right now, we're releasing it when we release it to the next group um, of, you know, they're not even testers because it's going to be in the app store. Um, but we're releasing it as fast as we can and as safely as we can. And we are all part of this, residents especially, because we need your feedback um, so that we can make it better uh, and we need it constructively. If you want to give feedback, the best way to do it is give us feedback with an idea of how to make it better. Um, uh, but that's what we're trying to do. And this mobile app, look, this... This company, it by the way, it's 2024, right? This mobile app, if this was easy to build, we would have built this eight years ago. The iPhone and app stores have been around since 2007. This is hard to do, really hard. It's not a game. It's not just some thing with a bunch of diamonds to play bingo. This is a really hard thing to build. And we need to get it going and do it as right as possible. Let us do it slow and steady is my is my hope. And this is again, I have a different role than than other folks, right? As the owner and CEO and chairman of Linden, I've got a lot of different things going on. For Second Life, we want to release we would release this half baked, no problem. We would do this so fun and we would fail and it would get all the complaints and everything. We've got bigger things that we have to worry about to make sure this works well. Be on our side. Give us the help we need. And let's make it so that two years from now, we have the best mobile experience on the planet. That's that's the goal. Thank you. All right. Well, we have a lot of loose end questions and including uh, a couple more detailed questions circling back to one of the hot topics, which has to do with child avatars and our uh, latest policy changes. So uh, we're going to remind people that we have we're taking questions from a combination of the live chat and also the pre submitted questions that came in. Uh, so let's rapid fire go through and so we can like knock out some of these questions and answer a little bit uh, detail where appropriate. Um, so let's circle back to the child avatar policy. Uh, I'm hearing a lot still about a modesty layer for child avatars, asking things like, does an alpha layer count? Uh, we literally just moments ago got a question on our form that says, can we please just have a clear answer? Is Bakes on Mesh acceptable for the modesty layers? Yes or no? 
Another person says, I really think the questions posted about modesty needs to be addressed sooner than later to avoid the frustration that we are feeling trying to comply. So Grumpity, I realize it's a lot there. Um, is there anything you can offer to sort of elaborate, again, noting that there is the governance user meeting as well, but anything off the cuff that you can answer uh, in this session? Let me try. Um, so there were questions that came in earlier um, asking about alpha layers. Um, and the reason alpha layers do not count is because they can be taken off and re-added. The deal is the modesty layer must not be removable. If it's baked on the skin or the body and you intend on continuing to role play as a child avatar, but in a different skin or body, then that new skin must also contain an unremovable modesty layer. All right, um, there should not, and then um, again, you know, if you really wanted to <laughs> uh, have a broader discussion about this, I highly recommend attending the user group, having a conversation, um, checking in uh, with um, the FAQ. I understand there's a desire for clarity, and I think uh, the plan is that our governance team is going to talk uh, with content creators uh, to get uh, more input and to get a decision. Um, so the FAQ is going to be updated. Um, just Absolutely. So that is a, a work in progress meeting. It is constantly evolving as more questions and feedback comes in. I, I realize there's frustrations on this topic. We appreciate that and hear it. Um, so reminder to people, the governance team, you know, the, that user group meeting, you're going to be talking right to the people that are involved in that, that can directly and in real time respond to you. And those happen quite frequently. So please, please, please don't overlook that opportunity to interact with that team. And please refresh and check out that FAQ um, as well. Um, Grumpity, appreciate that you tackling that. Um, I know there's still comments and questions coming in on it, obviously. Um, a related question to all of this has to do with um, the age verification and sort of allusion to that there may or may not be changes there at some point. Um, will there be a requirement for uploading birth certificates and is Second Life ready to face that kind of data risk? That's a question that comes in from the community. So we are currently exploring third-party age verification tools. Um, any options that we're considering have to be the least intrusive possible. Um, again, right, like uh, assume good intent. Uh, we are trying to make this as easy and painless as possible and not to put any roadblocks that we don't have to uh, for people to enjoy a cell. Um, the field of age verification has evolved greatly since the last time that we had a third party age verification uh, system working with us in the cell. Um, and any partner we consider would absolutely need to follow every data privacy law that has uh, been put in place since then as well. Um, there are multiple solutions available that uh, do not store any submitted data past the point of verification, um, and uh, those uh, all look very reasonable, uh, and no decision has been made on um, age verification one way or another. It is another tool in the toolbox uh, that is available to us, and we're considering it. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have one more question coming in about the child avatar policy. Um, this one actually is from the pre-submitted list. And again, we are seeing feedback in the chat. So acknowledging that we're taking that in as well. Um, this inquiry pertains to the recent updates about uh, age play and child avatars. How will this affect consenting adults who utilize adult avatars, but affectionately refer to each other using terms such as poppy, mommy, daddy, mommy, baby girl, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, either due to their BDSM dynamic or simply as endearing pet names. It seems that even though they are adults and behave accordingly, there might be a concern of them being identified as childlike based on subjective criteria. Who would like to tackle that one? I, I, I can. So first of all, 
The words that you used are, are important. So the first thing you said was child avatar, but the second thing you said was age play. So there is a big difference between having a child avatar, role playing as a child, and having sexualized age play between an adult avatar and a child avatar. Those are extraordinarily different. They're viewed differently by us. They're viewed differently by society outside of us. So I want to be, I want to clarify. So, you know, sexualized age play between uh, an adult avatar and a child presenting avatar is not allowed. It's never been allowed. It's never going to be allowed. And the fact that it's two adults on either side of that, which makes it morally that's a very different moral question. That's that's two grownups, but that's not the way society looks at our virtual world, and it's not the way we do. We look at our virtual world as if it's the real world a lot in a lot of these instances. So when you use those two words in the same sentence, I get worried. So let's just talk about the child avatar play, or more particularly, the two adult avatars that are saying baby or daddy. We're not like our goal is not to make this worse. <laughs> Our goal is to comply with, you know, we're, we're talking about age verification. We have been doing it the way we've been doing it because we're comfortable the way we've been doing it for years. Laws are, are making us look at this. We're not, we didn't wake up last week and say, you know what, we're going to make this super difficult for everybody. We woke up and said, wow, the EU has just passed a law that's going to make this super difficult for everybody, right? So we're a lot on the defensive here. We're responding. You know, I, I, I can't go into, because because if I give a laundry list of words, it'll probably go, you know, probably down a rabbit hole. But your adult avatars and what you want to call your other av avatars, we, we're, we're, we are supportive of you living your best life in Second Life, and if that's how you choose to live it, we're supportive of that. That's the fine line that we have to we have to run. When I hear the word sex, you know, age play as it pertains to sexualized age play, that's a hard line, and that's a hard line so that Second Life continues. And if it really bothers you, I'm sorry because how I feel about how two adults interact is very different than how I feel about an adult avatar interacting with a child avatar um you know these are these are important differentiators and we're going to have to stick to them and it, by the way that's not new <laughs> like this isn't a new thing we're just getting more specific about it um uh so that's 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 my answer on that on the on those thank you um, and in terms of this, it's such a hot topic, right? There's a broad spectrum of things here regarding this policy. Um, there's a few questions that people have asked about anime presenting avatars, which often have a youthful look or focus, and there can be some ambiguity there. Um, is there anything you can say, uh, I guess, Grumpy, this would be to you, about um, anime avatars and what the community needs to know as it pertains to this policy? We are aware of anime avatars, um, and <laughs> we certainly know they exist um, and are popular. Um, I would say if you are presenting as an avatar under 18, and if you are age playing an avatar under 18, then uh, you would need to comply by the new policy, right? Um, we, as as we've stated multiple times, right, look at, at many factors, both the visual appearance and how the avatar presents and, you know, the profile, for example, and many, many other factors uh, when we investigate reports. And if the avatar you are playing is under 18, then it is a child avatar. Uh, the fact that, you know, anime avatars have large eyes and childlike faces would not alone uh, mean that your avatar is a child avatar. Yeah, you know, look, all these questions, like I, I'm, I'm hearing them, you're hearing them, we're all asking them. Everybody wants a specific answer. You actually don't. As, as much as you think you do, you actually want us to have some wiggle room in how we make these decisions. You need us to have specific answers where there's specific lines, 
you actually want some gray area. I know that now I have several people on my team in a total panic because they actually want the specific answers also, but you it's second life. You are never going to be able to get a specific thin pencil line drawn that says this is okay and this isn't okay. There was for those of you who who remember and as old as I am when this when a whole bunch of pornography thing was brought in front of Congress and um, I believe it was uh, Ed Meese said I can't define pornography but I know it when I see it right I don't know if I can define this the way everybody wants it defined but use your heads you're going to know it when you see it sexualized age play is sexualized age play yeah. Can we can we write that in any more specific way? Probably, and it would probably take us three years, and then we would probably have to rewrite it. And everyone, there's no solution here. You know what it is. I get that you don't, and I get that people want this specific. Specific is basically impossible for us to give you. It you just want, trust me, you want a little gray area. You want your anime because that's what's fair. You want your anime to present in certain ways. Use your heads. Don't do it in like G area, like don't mess this up for everybody. Be super smart about it. And don't like, look, if you wanna send your, like don't send us every single picture and make us say yes or no. Be smart, act smart, communicate smart. Don't blow this for second life. And I get I'm being like, I understand the harshness in some ways of what I'm saying, but it's really the opposite. This is the kindest way to tell everyone we're on your side. We are walking in your shoes. We talked to Lindens who have avatars that present under 18. We're all on the same team, trust me, on that. We need some gray area. What you're looking for is fair. What you're asking for is reasonable. Let us figure this out over time. Don't panic. Follow the rules. Don't go into the areas that mess this up for the mobile place. Just be smart. And this will work out. Thanks, Brad. Uh, all right, we have other topics besides this, but I'm gonna sneak in one or two more just because there's a high, high volume of these. Um, this is a little bit of a different spin on this uh, phenomena though. Um, so this has to do with internal policies and community engagement. Uh, resident asks, I read your FAQ and I wonder if out of envy or jealousy, if there's a situation where a user with their friends might gang up to expel another user, I guess, presumably insinuating false reports, et cetera. Um, maybe a, a, somebody trying to compete, eliminate competition as a merchant or for whatever reason. Uh, how can this user defend themselves? So this has maybe a governance question. Rubbity, is this something you want to tackle or do we defer people to governance for that? So I can answer this now and suggest people visit the governance user group. Uh, but we can answer this as many times as people worry about it. Uh, reports are thoroughly investigated, and only when sufficient evidence is found to support the allegation is any action taken on the account. If someone gets 20 of their friends to report you, but there's no evidence to support the allegation, your account won't be harmed. Um, Getting 30 abuse reports on the same person uh, from a group of friends also won't make you more likely to be banned. Although chances are someone's really mad at you and there's a little bit of drama going on. Uh, and you're welcome to come to the governance user group uh, where the governance team will be able to tell you this again. Another person says, hey, I'm off. Also very upset about not being able to go into adult sins, and presumably as a child avatar, uh, because I love concerts and the majority of them are in A-rated sins. To make me give up a dream, uh, my dream second life to see a concert is upsetting to me. Any comments about just that phenomena of a child not being able to visit? Child yes. Avatar? Yes, I have a comment, which is we're on your side. I get that it's upsetting. It's upsetting. 
And that's a bummer. But we have to have rules that make this last. We have to have rules that make second life last. And there are pressures and there are external things and people write stuff about us and we have to react and we have to put rules in place. And so it's super upsetting. And I, what I beg of you is that you acknowledge that we have to have some rules and while super upsetting, go to the concert with another avatar. And I know how awful that is. I know you don't want to do it. It's just the way it has to be. And as terrible as it is for you, it has to be that way. The concert could also, if it's a healthy and not adult concert, could be held in another area. And that's also fine. But we have to have certain rules to protect everybody. Just like what Grumpity said, 20 people gang up on someone. Does that make Derek's life miserable? Sure. He has to go through and go through all this. And someone got 20 people to do all that. And then he has to go and prove the innocent and everything. Stop doing that. Enjoy second life for what it is. Stop ganging up on people if there's no evidence and making, you know, Derek and 17 people spend all their time on that instead of us being able to spend time, money, and energy on building a better second life. The more we get to those, the less we can do the other things. So back to that person. I honestly feel terrible that that's the way this has to go. That is honest thing. I am honestly torn up about it. However, I have to put the future of second life ahead. And as awful as that is for you, I beg of you to go to that concert with an adult avatar. And it's just bad. But I remember when I was a kid, I sometimes dressed up as an adult. And so, you know, maybe there's some way that makes this work. Maybe there's not. Maybe we can figure something out 10 years from now on how to get the concert in two places at once. You know, there's lots of things we can try to do. But right now, given things that have happened, given the way the world looks at things, given the public nature of stuff that we do, we have to have rules and those rules have to abide by a certain set of things. And this one hurt you. And I feel honestly terrible about it, but that's the way it has to be right now. Thank you. All right, so we're about the 15 minute mark. We've covered a lot already as it pertains to that policy. I'm getting some prompts from people like, hey, cover other things. So let's move on to that. But just to close that topic as a reminder, because there is such great interest in it, again, the governance user group meeting is a great place to interact and ask those questions in detail directly to that team. And of course, that FAQ will be updated. So please, please uh, heed that advice and we will uh, hopefully address your questions there. Um, all right, so we have more questions coming off. Again, looking at both the pre-submitted and those that are coming in. Some of these may be a little a bit, uh, you know, random, but we'll pull them as we can. Um, here's a question that came from somebody related to the skill gaming community. As an active member of SL's vibrant gaming community, I thoroughly enjoy participating in the gaming systems available within that platform. However, recent discussions and observations have raised concerns regarding the possibility of unfair practices and payout distributions. Given the importance of maintaining fairness and integrity with the community, I would appreciate insight into the measures implemented by Linen Lab to oversee payouts in Second Life gaming systems. Specifically, I'm interested in understanding how do you ensure fairness and prevent any potential exploitation of that system? And Grumpy, I'm assuming this goes to you. Let me take a stab at it. Um, just like we can't give you uh, details about how we investigate other reports or once we have investigated other reports, we can't disclose how we handle reviews and investigations regarding skill games and how they pay out. Um, we do strongly encourage anyone who feels that they're experiencing unfair treatment 
or has experienced anything that could be a violation of the skill gaming terms and conditions to submit an abuse report uh, via the enrolled option or through a support ticket. Um, any evidence is particularly helpful, including but not limited to screenshots, chats, et cetera, as it will help the investigation. As much information as you can include, add it. If you can't fit it all into a single ticket or, or abuse report, submit multiple abuse reports. Um, they will be investigated. Okay, let's move on just to squeeze as much as we can in the remaining time. This next question comes up, uh, to us about adult content and the future of adult content in Second Life. It's a long question, so I'll just paraphrase it. They uh, reference the fact that historically we had the Zindra, Zindra initiative with a lot of community initiatives where Linden Lab participated. And they're asking essentially, is the door open to, uh, I guess, reinvigorating Zindra and or doing new initiatives for adult content? Anything to be said about the future of adult content in Second Life? Brett, you should probably answer that question since you're the, the closest to that initiative. Can I throw that back to you as moderator? Do you want to answer that? Yeah, I mean, can, but I'm just going to tell everyone what you tell me. Uh, yes, I'm going to be virtually kicked probably by my colleagues if I say too much. Um, I that's think exactly, by the way, that's exactly why I'm handing it to you. because <laughs> I do not want to be virtually kicked. Um, I, first of all, I'll acknowledge the larger concern, which is the future of adult content, which is to say, hey, are we going to change the dynamic of adult content in a way that's either discriminatory or reducing of that? And the answer is absolutely not. Um, and quite and quite honestly, we understand that as one of many um, types of experiences in Second Life, we recognize the robust and vibrant adult creator community and people that love to engage in that in a very thoughtful and meaningful way for them, why would we want that to go away? I mean, even though there are business considerations that we obviously have to operate under, we recognize that's part of the fabric of Second Life. So I hope that addresses that worry. Now, as to new initiatives that may or may not be happening, there are some things that we're working on. I do feel it's a little premature to speak to specifics on it, but let's just say in the spirit of the question that where there are concerns about us pulling back, that is not the case. How about that? That's good. I, I'll, I'll add. So, so again, so this is both a question for Second Life and a question for Lyndon. And I want to keep mentioning that because they are different things. And I want to go back to the ultimate, you know, mission, which is there is a moral imperative that Second Life continues and adult content is part of it. When people ask me, what is Second Life? I say, it's a virtual world for grownups. Grownups do adult things. We all do adult things. We also go to church. And, I, you know, we, I don't know why I picked that example. Um, that was, but I, it's the one that popped into my head. We go to bars, we go to dance clubs, we do all sorts of things. And part of what we do is adult stuff. It is second life. Like we are for grownups. It doesn't mean that that's all it is. It just means that grown-up stuff happens in grown-up virtual worlds. So Brett alluded to stuff. Yeah, we're working on a lot of stuff, and if and none of it is to curtail it. What we do have to do is we have to get it into the right places so that it doesn't show up in the mobile app. Just listen to that, right? Don't mess that up. We are supportive. It's not that we're okay with it. We're supportive of adult stuff. We are behind it. We are wanting it to be better and safer and build tools to make it more enjoyable and partnerships to make it better and better and better. It has to happen in specific places. Don't mess with the ratings. Don't try to get around it. Do, do things in private places that don't mess up this app. Got it. Thank you. All right, let's uh, move forward. We're exactly 10 minutes till, so let's uh, squeeze in a few more. Uh, we People may have noticed that in our new user uh, initiatives, we have something called the Community Exhibition. If you haven't checked it out, it's within the Welcome Hub, and it's essentially almost like a World's Fair 
of uh, community members that are there participating. It's slowly been rolling out and expanding. So we did get a question about that, um, asking, hey, can we make it a little bit more inclusive for communities? Uh, and you know, why are you picking these communities and not ours, for example, um, to avoid favoritism, et cetera. Um, Grumpity, I guess this would be directed at you. Anything you wanna say about that initiative and or what we can expect as far as people being able to participate in it if their community might be interested? I should totally do like Oberwolf and throw it back at you, um, but I'll I'll do my best. Um, with the initial batch of communities uh, in the exhibition, um, it was hand selected, um, and we wanted to kind of try out and see how this works. Um, it was uh, the first step. Um, we actually just updated the exhibition with several additional communities. And we'll continue to grow and swap out communities at a pretty regular cadence. Uh, I hear applications are still open. So if you wanted to apply, here they are. Um, and I hope to see uh, a lot of new uh, communities featured in the exhibition. I think it's really cool uh, what we're doing there. Okay, uh, one more question I want to jump into. Uh, this has to do with creator tools. We have obviously a lot of creators in attendance, arguably almost everybody. Um, I would like to raise a deep concern, this is from the community, uh, about an essential aspect of Second Life as this world was conceived and uh, which has been, and I'm quoting here, largely neglected in the past 10 years or so, user content creation. None of the end viewer tools have been improved to encompass even simple mesh modeling. And we must rely on incredibly complex and hard to grasp external programs like Blender, uh, barring all uh, but experienced 3D designers from building nice things in SL. Uh, the question goes on, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but essentially it's speaking to the fact of, hey, what's our commitment for creator tools and enhancing and improving those? So Grumpity, when we were, when we were preparing for this, Grumpity said, I have one rule for you, Brad. Do not talk about things that you don't know what you're talking about. Like literally that was her actual quote. Like don't say, like if you don't, don't say it, which I love because um, obviously I'm not able to follow that advice. Here's what I want everyone to know. When you run a company, you come up with like strategic initiatives. You call them all different things. You call them pillars, you call them that. And you want as few as possible to have the biggest impact as possible. We have very few and very important strategic initiatives. And, and one of them is um, creator tools. And so I know that, you know, uh, PBR first of a long line um, of them, uh, but creator tools is one of the three initiatives that this company is undertaking in order to make Second Life better. Our hope, and quite frankly, our need is that this enables more creativity um, when we get these other tools out there. I'm going to let Grumpity decide which of the ones she's going to talk about, which of the initiatives. But our hope and need is that this provides a better experience for creators to provide better experiences for um, residents. And in fact, we want creators, not competitors, but we want more creators to come into the system because the more creators that come into the system, the more residents will come into the system, the more our current creators will be able to sell and build, and it will create a very, very virtual, uh, virtuous cycle. So one of the top three initiatives is creator tools. You're going to start seeing, hopefully you've already seen, and you're going to start seeing more and more uh, as soon as this year. Excellent. Well, okay, looking at the time, we're in the last five minutes, and I think a nice thing to do here would be to offer each of you a chance to sort of wrap up closing thoughts, obviously, in response to what you've seen and heard this hour. Um, let's uh, have you continue, continue, Oberwolf. What are your closing thoughts? Um, that depends on whether Grumpity is going to do her closing thoughts after. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of being last. Oh, well, let's do Grumpity then. Hey. Um, I'm going to sneak in just a little bit more about creator tools because uh, hopefully that will fit in nicely uh, with what I want to say. Um, 
we actually have a lot of energy internally from Lindens uh, who love the creator community, love the creation process and want to um, kind of breathe in uh, a bit of fire and excitement uh, into this process, not by making new unique to SL things necessarily, but by bringing the standards of content creation to SL. Um, oftentimes what we do here is we really like to roll our own, uh, and sometimes we have shunned, uh, the industry standards in order to do so. Uh, what we've been trying is to make SL exciting, um, with the content and less exciting with the technology. Um, we, we don't need the technology to be unusual. We would like it to be predictable. Um, so... The build tools, um, the, the question you asked, Brett, I actually uh, think about this a lot, right? The build tools that were available in SL in the early days um, really brought people together because there was the, the joint creation. Um, and it's true that with the, you know, with the introduction of Mesh, uh, people started building off platform and then building their, bringing their content in. And some of that spirit has not necessarily been lost, but it's dissipated. The way that you pass the time has changed. Um, but those build tools are still there. I build with Prims and I sure can't figure out Blender. So um, it's still possible to do it. You can still have fun building together. It's just that then there's also uh, this beautiful professional looking mesh content that is available in a cell as well. Um, and, uh, what we want to do is, uh, improve those tools, improve that pipeline, uh, and make it easier and more predictable, uh, to make content for Second Life, um, and for all of us in Second Life, uh, to have, uh, <laughs> less lag. Um, so all of these new tools, um, I laughed because, uh, we recently looked at what people like the most and hate the most, and uh, they like less lag and they hate more lag. Um, so uh, when I say it, it's a little bit of a joke because of course lag isn't like a single thing. It's made up of many, uh, many different pieces. Introducing new tools for creators, part of the work we're doing is to make sure that we are um, not slowing down Second Life in order to support these new things. Um, and this is an approach we're trying to take in many directions, right? We want to bring SL forward. We want to grow our audience. We want to uh, make it amazing for you and to bring you new customers and new communities and to expand the reach of SL. Um, at the same time, um, we want to make sure that it remains reachable and accessible to everyone. Um, and it's a tall order. Uh, so <laughs> uh, sometimes we find our attention a little bit fractured, uh, but it is because there's so much in this world we want to do. And the awesome thing is, uh, the more Second Life grows, the more we'll be able to do. We see your feature requests coming in, and there's a lot of them, and they're great ideas. And I would love to be able to do all of them, but we can't do them all at the same time. Thanks. All right, let's toss it to you, Oberwolf, for the final word. Well, now this is the first time in a long time I was. I wish I didn't go last. I, I Grumpy, that was just awesome. Um, you know, from I it, anyone who who has been a Linden knows that I can be kind of repetitive. Um, uh, but from the point of view of making Second Life and continuing the moral imperative of Second Life and making Second Life last. You as residents and creators have to challenge us to always be the best. And we're okay with that. Um, what I ask is that you also challenge yourselves and um, help us make it the best. And while I don't have all the answers to that, I can tell you a couple of things that will help Second Life continue on forever. Um, one of those things is to keep coming up with 
like super cool stuff. I hear a lot like, oh, this resident was able to do this and this creator was able to do that. And I don't have the specifics right now, but they're awesome. Like someone's doing something with chat and someone's doing like, we, we have really, really smart people. That's, you know, challenging yourselves to make it better. Another one is mobile, right? You, I can't tell you how many things are gonna be broken in the mobile app, but I know it's more than one, right? You can you can give us the comments. We actually need them to know what to work on. But complaining about the mobile app isn't going to be helpful because we're just coming up with it. So supporting the mobile app and using it, and even when it's broken, and helping us and tell us telling us the most important thing that you want. Those are all very valuable. Of course, saying it's not working on my iPhone, you know, two is also valuable, not gonna, you know, you know, we got to put these things on on the list. But, but, you know, we are trying. So, so challenging yourselves. And then the last thing that Grumpity hinted on is for Second Life to be truly successful, we do need, um, uh, we do need to have that resident engagement. We have phenomenal resident um, engagement with the very engaged. And I know that sounds like a circular thing. That sounds obvious. But our engaged residents and creators are unbelievably passionate. Um, Second Life or Linden as a business and Second Life as an entity, we need to have more um, uh, resident engagement to make it a better community. So as our communities start to, and everyone here is probably seeing, you know, there's an interaction here, an interaction there that's that's happening less. Anything that the residents can do to bring in more residents, this is not a financial thing. This is about making Second Life um, continuing to thrive. Anything that you can challenge yourselves to do, and sure, telling us to do it, is is helpful but anything that residents and creators can do to bring in more residents and creators will make this a more vibrant community and that's incredibly important for us right now um so so that's another challenge that i lay out there um assuming the good intent and giving us and challenging us to be better you can do both of those things and what I'd like to leave is, is we are all on the same team. All of these things that we've mentioned are complicated. All of these things have multiple reasons why we're doing them. All of these things have been a result of a tremendous amount of introspection, a tremendous about, amount of, um, uh, uh, you know, I've gone through things, but most of the company, have, we've gone through everything that we do from the bottom up. And some of the changes you're seeing, or a lot of the changes you're seeing are results of that. Those are all good things. Even if you don't agree with them, you have to agree that making changes for the betterment and long lasting of Second Life is in general, a good thing. So um, we're all on the same team and you can challenge us. We welcome that. Um, challenge yourselves also. And this is gonna continue for, as far as I'm able to see. So I want to thank everyone, um, not just for being on this call, but for being part of Second Life. I want to thank everyone who's challenged us to be better, who's asked these specific questions and is going to get help and answers, and everyone who has helped other people when they come in for the first time to make them feel welcome, to bring them into the community, to find where they fit in. That's the value of Second Life, and to let everyone current and future residents live their best lives. So I really am grateful for that. Um, I'm grateful for Brett running this. Not easy reading the 72 million comments that we got before this meeting and then in real time going through them. That is not an easy job. Thank you so much for that. Um, and I, I look forward to um, not to make snap judgments. This one felt really good to me. So I look forward to uh, this, this being the first of many 
um, and getting feedback on who you want on the calls and what are the topics, all that's going to be very helpful going forward. But this is part of that new stuff, right? People are going to focus on the new rules. People are going to focus on these things, of course, but also focus on the fact that we just had this total, you know, open discussion um, for an hour and a half with residents, with the folks that are making the decisions um, uh, behind the scenes and why. I, I, that's what I want. That's what I mean by, you know, challenge yourselves to see the good in this, to see the good in the new rules, to see the good in what we're trying to build and to keep an eye out. You know, mobile's coming, tools are coming, other things are coming. It's cool. It's really cool. Um, we're on your side. Just know that. I, I promise you that. Um, and so thank you. I don't know, Brett, if you want to, you know, uh, wrap it up. Sure, just a simple wrap up. Just as you said, thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone for being here. We have a full house, obviously. Um, and ob we're seeing the comments and Sorry, I got muted there. Uh, we do see the comments and we acknowledge that not every single question got answered. We are gonna pass on and review those to the executive team and there will be follow-up community roundtables and the user groups. So lots of opportunities for those things to be heard. You've not missed the boat here in this one. Uh, it's not a one and done situation here today. Uh, we'll have news on the next uh, community roundtable, maybe sometime mid June or so, uh, posted on our blog soon. And as a reminder, we'll be sending uh, some links here in chat to close it down on the places you can go to reach us as well. The feedback portal, the support portal, and the community user group schedule. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We look forward to seeing you at a future roundtable. Thanks. Community user group schedule. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We look forward to seeing you at a future roundtable. Thanks. Thank you.